बातें इस्लाम कुछ भी हो जाएंगे हम जहां भी के जाना पड़े जाएंगे हम जहां भी के जाना पड़े हमें अस्सलाम वालेकुम व रहमतुल्लाह एंड वेलकम टू अ ब्रांड न्यू ऑनलाइन एक्सक्लूसिव सीरीज ऑफ बीकन ऑफ ट्रुथ as always बीकन ऑफ ट्रुथ हैज बीन अ प्रोग्राम टू डिस्पेल फॉल्स नोशंस अबाउट इस्लाम एंड एज अहमदियत इज द मोस्ट सिक्योरेस्ट इस्लाम द इस्लाम ऑफ द होली कुरान we are here to debunk the myths spread by the anti ahmadiyya rhetoric um all have witnessed it recently during lockdown people continue to make dishonest insinuations that ahmadis for example have their own quran or a different kalima a different creed to other muslims a variety of red herrings and frankly lies against islam ahmadiyya so for example far fetched allegations that ahmadi muslims have created their own heaven and hell here on earth or anger over why ahmadis choose to pay the janda out of their free will by the way uh, just completely absurd so we're here to set the record straight inshallah and of course we want your input whether you're an ahmadi muslim or not your comments and views on our discussions you can text us uh, tweet at us or email us at beacon@mta.tv at the um, all the details to share your views will be shown on the screen throughout the program and of course we will take those comments on board that will help our discussions going forward now in today's program we'll be talking about the need for a reformer and revival of islam i mean it's the 21st century religion is seen as fantasy secularism atheism deism are all on the rise and conversations are at an all time high about islam and modernity and liberalism the, the dire need for reform in the world of islam and the world of islam both internally and externally let's face it and be honest is not in a good condition at all and so we must ask ourselves as muslims has god left islam but what's the future of islam now is religion now me here say in stories of the past where is the reformer for our time and like i said we would love to hear what you have to say especially our other muslim brothers and sisters we want to know your views so to help our discussion today we have usama mubarak and roman basit both students of jamia ahmadiyya uk which is a university of the ahmadiyya muslim community here in the uk and they're joining us via video link and i'm going to come to usama mubarak first assalamu alaikum um, usama Wa alaikum salam fatir. So Osama look we I've just briefly touched upon you know the logical need for the time right now for a reformer. But you know if the holy Quran is the perfect law which of course we believe it to be the perfect law the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam the perfect prophet what need is there for a reformer? So could you just continue this discussion from a logical you know and a um a general observance of the world? of the need of a reformer and what has been the practice of Allah Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim as you've already mentioned we see that religion over time regardless of what religion may be they become distorted and become corrupted in one way shape or form uh, the same case uh, we see in Islam i mean it's un- it's an undisputed fact it's also been historically proven mankind seems to crave this need for a sort of a physical implementation of these religious religious teachings which have slowly faded away and fatir as you mentioned we see that in islam i mean in this day and age look around you uh, there are so many sects so many offshoots of islam which are causing division within the ummah and there are all sorts of innovations making their way into islam as well whilst as you mentioned uh, we see atheism deism liberal islam etc etc um, growing steadily uh, recently i came across a poll um, which was conducted in the middle east it showed that the percentage of non-religious arabs in the middle east has risen by 8% in the past few years now if this doesn't shock you let's turn towards the west uh, we see that in the west um, the economist cited a pew research survey according to which 
they said that Americans who were raised as Muslims, 23% of these American Muslims, no longer identify with their faith whatsoever. And this is incredibly alarming, to say the least. Uh, Fatir, as you mentioned, even if you, you know, look at a general scope, uh, generally speaking, we see that um, followers of any religion, they are being classed and labeled as outdated, old fashioned. People accuse them of just following fables of the past, so much so that people say, your religion is not compatible with this modern day and age. And also due to the divide within the Muslim Ummah and their actions, we see that Islam has been heavily misrepresented in society, as well as, of course, we see this rise in media propaganda against Islam, which doesn't do us any favors. So what does this do? This leads us to uh, face this rise of Islamophobia and also affects Muslims at its core. So Fatir, you mentioned how a number of notions and concepts of Islam have become distorted over time. Let's take the example of jihad. Uh, jihad in the media has been portrayed in such a twisted way, it's become a synonym of extremism. And what this does is it uh, impacts the world in general. And it also leads to people, youth, um, you know, Muslim youth traveling to the Middle East and joining this fold of extremist and radical Islam. So that, that's also another alarming point. Um, if we now take it to uh, another global scale, we see that there is nothing but unrest. We see racial tensions prevalent um, across the US. Uh, we see inter-religious issues worldwide. We see minorities, ethnic and religious, being deprived of their rights. We see rise in uh, threats of nuclear war. So people are now, some people are, return, are, are turning towards um, the religious communities and asking, where is this reformer? How can we reconcile all of these problems that we faced with in the 21st century. Now, the last thing that you mentioned in your question, I'd just like to address that. Um, people also go on to ask that, is this really the legacy that Islam is left with? Is this the legacy that God Almighty would leave Muslims with? Um, bearing in mind that the Muslim Ummah is the most beloved nation of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And wouldn't God Almighty protect this nation as well as his perfect book? If we look into history, we see that in the past, whenever Islam hit an all-time low, God Almighty sent reformers to revive faith. And as per his tradition, as per his um, nature, surely would he not do the same thing if Islam was to deteriorate in the future? I think, Osama, that's a very good point you said there as well. Is this the legacy now? Is this the legacy which we're left with Islam? And you know, there's all sorts of research polls out there um, just for any Muslim themselves just to step back, look at the wider picture. It's not a good picture at all. You have Muslim youth born and bred in the West going to extremist ideologies. On the other spectrum, you have other Muslims um, going towards absolute liberalism and saying that, you know, the Holy Quran needs to change. We need to let go of some certain teachings. So, you know, the question we're asking is, isn't this the time for reform? just from a logical point of view. And we would love to know um, your point of view. Our other Muslim brothers and sisters, don't you think that this is now, you know, we're at a condition and at a level with Islam now that there has, there has to be and there must be some kind of reformer. And, you know, Osama spoke about Pew researches. There's another research which was carried out by the institution. They asked Muslims all sorts of questions. This is available online. And they found out that for, for the most part, Muslims across the world think that the coming of the Imam Mahdi or Jesus Islam, is imminent. It's going to happen during our age, not sometime in the future, but the, you know, the condition of the world begs for the, a reformer to come. So please tweet at us, email us, send us a WhatsApp message, a voice note, a video, and we, we really want to hear what our other Muslim brothers and sisters have to say about this. Now, I also have Ruman Basit, who is another student of Jamia Hamdi UK online uh, with us. Assalamu alaikum, Ruman. Welcome, Salam, Fatih. So, Ruman, thank you for jo joining us. Look, we've spoken about the logical observations of the world and how Allah always sends a reformer when religion is corrupted. Religion isn't even seen as something progressive in modern day, um, uh, you know, by secularists especially. 
and people are saying, you know, religion's backwards, so on and so forth. But if Islam was to have a reformer, then surely the Holy Quran would have mentioned this, the Hadith, the Holy Prophet وسلم, would have made these prophecies. So please tell us more about these prophecies, prophecies in the Holy Quran and by the Prophet of Islam وسلم. Okay, Jazakallah Fatir, um, Bismillah Rahman Rahim. So in the Holy Quran, we actually find a very clear prophecy about someone who would come in the latter days and who will revive Islam. In fact, he will form a Jamaat which would be like the Jamaat, the community, formed by the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam himself 1400 years ago. Now this prophecy, we find it in Surah Jummah, which is chapter 62 of the Holy Quran, verses 3 and 4. Where Allah the Almighty tells us how he sent Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to the unlettered Arabs at the time who were very, very misguided, right? They were in clear misguidance, manifest misguidance. And the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he came and he guided them and he purified them and he totally transformed them, right? Now in the next verse, Allah the Almighty says, وَآخِرِينَ مِنْهُمْ لَمَّا يَلْحَكُوا بِهِمْ Which means that there will be a group in the future which will be like these companions of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam although they have not yet met them. And this is the prophecy, okay? So we find out that in the future, there will be a group that will resemble the companions of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now, upon hearing this naturally, one would wonder, I mean, who is this group that would come in the future? And, you know, the companions of the Holy Prophet actually thought the exact same thing. So an incident is, and this is uh, recorded in Bukhari, which is the most authentic book of Hadith, that when this verse was being revealed to the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you know, the companions were seated around the Holy Prophet. And upon hearing this verse, Hazrat Abu Huraira, he actually asked the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that, O Messenger of Allah, who is this group of people? To which the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam very beautifully replied by placing his hand on the shoulder of a Persian companion called Hazrat Salman Farsi, radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And he said, لَوْ كَانَ الْإِمَالُ مُعَلَّقًا بِالثُرَيَّا لَنَا لَهُ رَجُلٌ أَوْ رِجَالٌ مِنْ هَأُولَائِ which means that even if faith were to reach the Pleiades stars, i.e. totally vanish from the earth, then a man from his people would come back and restore it. Sorry, not come back. A man from his people would come and restore it. Okay, so from this, we learn two things. Number one, that a time would most definitely come in the future where faith would totally vanish off the face of this earth. And it would be as if, you know, people have totally forgotten the teachings of Islam. And the second thing that we learn is that a man would come and he would restore it and he would actually be from the people of Salman, meaning that he would be of Persian lineage and Persian descent. Okay, now this makes it very clear that the Holy Quran points towards a reformer that will come in the latter days and will revive Islam. Now, even in addition to this, the Holy Prophet وسلم, has very categorically in his own words prophesied of a time of a downfall for Islam. He said in his own words, that a time would come where nothing would remain of Islam except its name, and nothing would remain of the Quran except its text. He said that the mosques would be full of people, but they would be empty of guidance. And also he said that the scholars at that time would be the worst creation under the sky. Okay, so now the Holy Prophet has told us of the problem that the Muslim Ummah was bound to face. And as Osama said, you know, it can't be that Allah would totally abandon Islam in such a time, right? So the Holy Prophet ﷺ, he told us the problem, but he also did tell us the solution also. He said that in such a time, the Messiah and the Mahdi would come. And these narrations of the Holy Prophet وسلم, are recorded in authentic books of Ahadith. Okay? Uh, for example, Bukhari and Muslim, they're available online. I would encourage everyone to read it for themselves. Because this whole concept of a Messiah and a Mahdi coming in the latter day, it's not, it doesn't come out of thin air and it, it's, not based on, it's not based on mere fairy tales, right? It comes from the books, it's written there, you can't deny it. For example, the Holy Prophet وسلم, he said that when the Mahdi comes, pledge allegiance at his hand, even if you have to crawl on your knees through snow or ice. Also, he said the Messiah will descend amongst you and he will be your Imam. So now putting all of this together, the Quran and the Hadith make it very, very clear that, you know, there will be a reformer in the latter days. And of course, the time that we live in really does beg for a reformer, as you mentioned. So the simple question would be, I mean, where is he? You know, you know, you've put it very beautifully there, and of course you're just scratching the surface here. Clear prophecies mentioned in the Holy Quran, 
clear prophecies by the Holy Prophet وسلم, you know, there's not a lot of ambiguity around it. They're becoming, you know, they're manifesting themselves. And like Ruman just said, the, you know, the prophecies about a reformer of the age, they haven't just come from, you know, thin air. They're not fairy tales. They're mentioned in the authentic books of Ahadith. They're mentioned in the Holy Quran. And the prophecies, for example, he spoke about mosques being full, being, but being devoid of guidance. People reading the Holy Quran, but not understanding its essence. And the Prophet of Islam, saying that the scholars of Islam will be the worst of creation under the heavens, under the skies. And, you know, people are aware of what, you know, modern day uh, clerics, scholars, so-called scholars of Islam, what kind of picture they're giving to the world of Islam. So Ahmadi Muslims have accepted these prophecies. We've seen that they've come true. The Holy Quran, whatever it's, you know, the prophecies that are mentioned in the Holy Quran, the, the, the specific prophecies mentioned in the hadith as well, they're coming true and Ahmadi Muslims have accepted those prophecies to have come true and they've accepted the Imam of the age, the reformer, the reviver of Islam. What we want to know is what our other brothers and sisters um, from Islam, to how they take these prophecies. When will these prophecies come true? Because for us, very logically, you know, just a, a normal observance of the state of Islam in the world, the state of the world in general as well, points to the dire need for the need um, of a reformer and of course the fulfillment of the prophecies mentioned in the Holy Quran, like Roman just said, and the prophecies that the Holy Prophet وسلم, had given. Now I'm going to come now to um, Osama and just before I come to him, again, for everyone who's viewing, viewing this right now online, um, wherever you know, channel you're on, we encourage you to engage with us and you know, tell us how you see these prophecies. Tell us how you see the future of Islam. Where is the reformer? Where is he, when is he going to come? Tweet at us, email us, send us a message on WhatsApp. The details will be on screen. So we look forward to what you have to say, inshallah. Um, I'm going to come to now Osama Mubarak. Assalamu alaikum, Osama. So Osama, look, we've just spoken about the prophecies in the Holy Quran, the Holy Prophet وسلم, and there's also a consensus um, that the Holy Prophet وسلم, gave this prophecy that at the head of every century there will come someone who will reform Islam, of course, a mujaddid, a mujaddideen. And the Muslim world looks at these mujaddideen, great reverence, and of course Ahmadi Muslims as well. We see them as um, people who Allah had you know, sent and to reform Islam for their age. Now, interestingly, they all came before the time of Hazrat Mizrahullah Muhammad Islam. So it would be interesting to know what did the great Mujaddideen, the great classical scholars of Islam, say about the latter-day reformer which is spoken about in the Holy Quran, um, who is spoken about in the Holy Quran and the Ahadith. So it's interesting you say that because, of course, there was a consensus regarding the Mujaddideen in general, but there was also another consensus regarding the latter-day messiah. Uh, the scholars agreed that a latter-day messiah was to come, and even the time frame of this latter-day messiah has been majorly agreed upon by the scholars of Islam, classical scholars, Mujaddideen, as you mentioned, and even the companions of the Holy Prophet wasallam, to be at the turn of the 14th century after Hijrah. So if you convert that to the Gregorian calendar that we use in this day and age, it would convert to the end of the 19th century. So if you allow me, I'll just narrate some um, you know, scholarly opinions of Mujaddideen and of classical scholars. So the first one I have is Hazrat Mullah Ali Qadi Saab, who was a great jurist and expert of Hadith in the 10th century. Now, he was of the opinion, of a very strong opinion, that after 1200 years had passed, this reformer would come, i.e. he was to be born in the 13th century. And you can look this up in more detail in his commentary, Mirqatul Mafati. Um, another example we have of a widely accepted 12th century Mujaddid, and he is accepted by the majority of the mainstream Muslims. His name is Hazrat Shah Waliullah Muhaddis Delvi. He wrote in his book, and I'll quote this reference uh, from Tafhimat Ilahiya. He writes, My Lord the Glorious has taught me that the resurrection day has come near and the Mahdi has prepared to come. More so, we have Nawab Siddiq Hassan Khan Sahib, who was a reformist of Indo-Arabic literature 
around the same time, and he also was of the same opinion. He believed that this, you know, long-awaited Mahdi would come at the turn of the 14th century, and this is stated in his book, Hujaj al -Kirama. So just for the viewers, we're not trying to bombard you with references. The point here is that you can see that there's already a sort of consensus forming between these Mujaddideen, these scholars, uh, in regards to the coming, the appearance, and the birth of this latter-day Messiah. Father, if time allows, I'll just delve into a few more, and I'll explain them as well. So another name of high reverence was Hazrat Alama Abdul Wahab Sharani, who was a prolific writer and scholar of Islam of the 10th century. Now, he wrote in his book, al Yawaqitul Wal Jawahir, that the Mahdi would be born in the year 1255 after Hijri. And this is a pretty precise year. And how fascinating is it that the birth of the promised Messiah, alayhi salam, was within five years of the proximity of this said narration. More so, if we trace back uh, all the way to the time of the uh, Holy Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, we have the likes of companions, um, namely Hazrat Huzefa bin al-Yaman, who also said that after the year 1240, after Hijri, God will send the Mahdi, and this is to be found in an najm al-Sakib. So, once again, how astonishing and how fascinating is it that the promised Messiah, alayhi salam's birth, was only about 10 years after this said narration, which traces back about 1400 years. So, keeping all of these statements of the scholars, the Mujaddideen, the companions of the Holy Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, in mind, we would like to pose this question to the rest of the Muslim Ummah, that if everyone was of the consensus that a Mahdi was to come at the uh, head of the 14th century, then what happened to that? Because the 14th century came to a close 40 years ago in the year 1980. And again, as Roman stated, he referenced a number of prophecies and signs that were to be fulfilled according to the Quran and Ahadith. Um, if we can't find and identify this um, this reformer of the 14th century, then God forbid, would we not be neglecting and discrediting these sayings of the Holy Quran, the Ahadith, and the scholarly opinions? As a matter of fact, us as Ahmadi Muslims, we believe that the promised Messiah, alayhi salam, did in fact, you know, do justice to all of these signs as he came during that time frame. Jazakla Osama for that, you know, he again, Osama spoke about the great Mujaddideen, the great classical scholars, referring to the 14th century, you know, becoming the time of the Hazrat Mizzah Ghulam Islam, saying that the Mahdi, the Messiah, will come during this time. And it's interesting to note now that these conversations have kind of been swept under, under the carpet. People aren't discussing these prophecies or these predictions which the great Mujaddideen or the great scholars of Islam had made. Because what happened was, Hazrat Mizzah Ghulam Ahmad Islam did come. They were true. And Ahmadi Muslims accepted those. And you have to remember, great scholars of Islam accepted Hazrat Mizzah Ghulam Ahmad Islam. They saw that the prophecies are coming true and they accepted him. But for the most part, these predictions haven't come true in the Muslim world. The predictions by the Holy Quran, by the Holy Prophet وسلم, by the Mujaddideen who were saying that this is go he is going to come in the 14th century and they're being ignored in the wider discussion um, within the Muslim world. You know, very, very few people are talking about the need for the Mahdi to come because frankly, it's just not, you know, it hasn't been fulfilled. And what's sad is that now there's a growing population of Muslims, not the majority, but there is a growing population who are saying that, you know what, there is not going to be any reformer in the Muslim world any anymore. And so they reject now those prophecies made in the Holy Quran, explicitly made in the Hadith by the Holy Prophet وسلم, of a reformer who was to come. And they say that, you, you know, it's, that's it. That's the end now. The, the future of Islam, there will be no reformer who will come. And that's the sad reality of what's happening right now. So we've had um, a number of questions. Someone has asked, has said that Islam is the complete religion until the end of mankind. Why should it need reform? I hope you've got the answer for that. That was actually the first question which we addressed. And we've addressed that, um, you know, from a logical standpoint, but also from the prophecies of the Holy Quran, of the Holy Prophet, that there would be a reformer. We aren't just making this up. 
This is in the tradition of Islam, widely accepted. Um, and then Shakil Ahmed also says that, yes, Muslims need reform. How do we know it's Ahmadiyyad? Why do we need Ahmadiyyad? And that's a very good question. And inshallah, this series of Beacon of Truth, that's where we aim to answer this question. How is Ahmadiyyad that reform? I'm going to now go to Ruman Basit, who I'm going to give the final question to. Ruman, Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. So, Ruman, just going straight to the point, how did Hazrat Mizza Ghulam Ahmed al-Islam see this vital need for reform? So, we've just had many very clear references that Osama's just mentioned of renowned Muslim scholars, right? But I'm sure that you would agree that no one can truly understand this concept of reform and a reformer coming better than the person who was himself sent for the job uh, by Allah the Almighty, which was the promised Messiah, alayhi now, just coming back to the point which I mentioned earlier on about Hazrat Salman Farsi, where the Holy Prophet وسلم, he placed his hand specifically on his shoulder. The Promised Messiah وسلم, actually explained this in a very unique and a different way. And he explained another wisdom behind him doing so. He writes in his book, Nuzul Masih, he said that the word Salman in the Arabic language means Do Salam Tiwala, which means that this person who would come for the reformation of Islam would inherently possess to would inherently possess the quality of bringing about two types of reformations within Islam. One would be internal, so he would reform the Muslim Ummah from within, and the other would be external, meaning that he would defend Islam from the attacks of other faiths and other religions. Now, just looking at the time of the advent of the Promised Messiah, which was in the 1800s, right? Muslims had become, uh, you know, they had gone astray from the real teachings of Islam, and they had uh, split up into so many different sects, and this had made them very weak and very vulnerable uh, and very prone to attacks from other faiths and other religions. And it was against such a backdrop that the promised Messiah, والسلام, he stood up and he claimed to be the promised Messiah and the promised reformer. And he defended Islam in every way possible until his very last breath. You know, he revived the Muslim Ummah from within by clarifying the misconceptions which had crept into the Muslim faith. For example, Muslims had stopped believing that God still speaks today, right? He proved from the Quran, from the Hadith, through his own person, from so many signs and miracles that he showed that God still speaks today as he did in the past and that God is a living God and that Islam is a living religion. Also, he clarified the misconception that Jesus والسلام, is, you know, alive in the heavens for over 2000 years. He categorically proved that Jesus, والسلام, just like every other prophet, has passed away. OK. So now also, of course, he defended, you know, against many other religions. For example, he had debates. He wrote so many books proving the truthfulness of Islam. So it's very, very clear that he did bring about a huge revolution in Islam. And he truly carried on the legacy of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Jazakallah Rahman. And there you have it, viewers. Um, empirical evidence from the Holy Quran, from the Hadith, from the great Mujaddideen and classical scholars of Islam that there was always going to be a reformer for our times when Islam needs it the most. Ahmadi Muslims have accepted that promised reformer as Hazrat Mizzawullah Muhammad al-Islam who proved himself true academically but more importantly through divine signs. And so right now do head over to the Beacon of Truth's Twitter handle Beacon underscore MTA and take part in a poll we are setting up right now as we speak. We are asking all um, our Muslim brothers and sisters is this the age for the revival of Islam foretold by the Holy Prophet ﷺ? Yes or no? And whatever your answer is, uh, please tell us how you see reform within Islam now. We encourage our other Muslim brothers and sisters, of course, to take part and also comment below the poll, share your views. We'll be very, very interested to hear your angle. For Ahmadi Muslims, the revival has started. We have a solution. We present a solution, but we want to ask other Muslims, what is the future of Islam now? Isn't it time Allah send someone to give direction? So Jazakallah for watching. We'll be updating you inshallah throughout the week about what people are saying, the discussions happening, the comments um, we receive. Until next Sunday inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. <laughs> Jana Pade Hame Jaye Ham
जा जाना 